And now Simon Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has hit back at Gary Neville for airing his views about workers' rights in the UK while he was in World Cup final duty on Sunday for ITV. Uh, before the game, I think we've got a clip of it, haven't we? He, he launched into it. Uh, have, have a listen to this. We should detest low pay. We should detest poor accommodation and poor working conditions. And that is something that we can never, ever accept in this region or in any region. And it is just worth mentioning that we've got a current government in our country who are demonising rail workers, ambulance workers and terrifyingly nurses. nurses. So in our country, we've got to look at workers' rights. But certainly when football goes now, we have to make sure we pick up on workers' rights wherever it goes because people have got to be equal and they've got to be treated equal. We can't have people being paid an absolute pittance to work. We can't have people in accommodation, which is unsavoury and disgusting. We can't have that. That shouldn't happen here with the wealth that exists, but it shouldn't happen in our country that our nurses are having to fight for an extra pound or an extra two pounds either. So that was on ITV. That was before the World Cup final. You must have thought, what am I watching here? Is this a political show? Uh, Rishi Sunak was in Latvia. He said, I don't think that's right. If, if you look back at our track record, my track record as Chancellor, I've always done everything I can to support our NHS and indeed the wonderful people who work in it. Right, that's one thing. Then yeah. he finishes off with, I think when most people are tuning in to watch Guy Neville, they want to hear about the football and watch the football. They don't want to discuss politics. Where is, you, where is your mind this morning, Simon, with where Gary chose to stray into? Well, look, I mean, the argument gets made regularly that he's a footballer. He's not a footballer. He's a 47-year-old person now that was a former footballer that works within football. He's got various businesses and he's uh, got strong opinions. He's entitled to his views. And this categorisation of stick to the football because you're a footballer is probably wrong. But in this instance, the reasons why it's right is because we were watching a football show. And we were watching well, a, a game, World Cup final, yeah. a World Cup final. So we really didn't need Gary, ironically, that's over there, being paid by BN, the broadcaster of Qatar, not saying this on their platform, but having the courage to say it whilst he's on ITV's platform. So there's an element of irony about his comparisons. You can't compare. It's, a, it's, a, it's an obscene comparison between some of the migrant workers' rights in the early stages of the change in Qatar from kafala mentality through to the workers' rights now that have now brought up to a standard that's satisfactory with the rights in this country. That's a horrendous comparison. It's a disingenuous one. It's a duplicitous one. And Gary's entitled to his political views. We know what they are. We know that he's a card-carrying, Corbynite, Trotsky is nincompoop at times. <laughs> but he is entitled to his views. And the fact he doesn't stand them up very well and the fact that his views are based upon one vantage point is for all of us to debate. And he can do it on different shows. When he went on to Have I Got News For You, he got his head handed to him because that wasn't a football show. That was a show about societal mickey-taking and those observations, and he got called out for being a ridiculous, a ridiculous hypocrite of railing against the Qatari World Cup, railing against the regimes over there, whilst going over there and taking the Qatari reals for working for BM. Well, I mean, he says we should detest poor accommodation and working conditions. We can never accept that in this region of Qatar or in any other region. And then goes on to talk about the situation in this country. Yeah. So basically he's saying we we should get our own situation right first. Well, and, yes. And then maybe comment well, well, on what's going on well, elsewhere. Well, well, but, I'm not but sure that's what he's saying, that, is That he? might be right. But in the meantime, a, a World Cup final was about to kick off between Argentina and France. See, the tragedy of this, right, this is all grist to Gary Neville's elbow. Right? This is all about the idea that Gary Neville has some relevance in his opinion. And tragically, some people think he does. And we do spend time because he puts his head above the parapet. He's got a lot to say for himself. He's a barrack room lawyer. He had lots to say for himself to me in Qatar until he got my, put in his place by me at the paddle tennis court when he was playing paddle with the people that he purports to vilify, i.e. the people that paid him to be over there. So he's a bleeding hypocrite. Are you right? surprised Sunak responded to it? I'm surprised that he would feel the necessity you're giving somebody credence. And and Gary Neville is a very, very, very good football pundit. And when he talks about matters on the field, I think that he is uh, amongst the very best when it comes to other opinions. First of all, he's entitled to them. Second of all, they don't need to be on a football show. Third of all, if you're going to have these views about the regime and the environment that you're in as well, because you're bringing them into it, right? Why don't you do it when you're on BN? because it didn't suit you, you were getting paid half a million quid or whatever you're getting paid to be over there, or whatever the ridiculous sum when people weren't allowed to argue with you, apparently. Don't know about that. There's a different discussion. But the bottom line is, is I sort of sit here, and I find myself guilty of this trap. 
I think he's a Wally, right? And I don't really care about him. And I get sucked into the conversation about what Gary Neville said. We could debunk Gary Neville's arguments in a New York minute. He wouldn't come on a show like this because he wouldn't be able to stand it up. And he wouldn't be able to defend himself against the ridiculous assertions that he makes because he can't back it up. He's all mouth and trousers, right? He'll turn around and say, I think we should mobilise the fans when Man United fans are marauding around uh, Old Trafford, potentially putting people in harm's way. And then he has to backtrack from it. You know, there is an element of what Gary says at times that has relevance. That was not the time and place. No. Richie Sunik, you, you, you give these people the credibility, and we're doing it here, by discussing what they've said. I couldn't care less what Gary Neville's opinion is. He's entitled to it. I certainly didn't turn on the World Cup to listen to it. No, exactly. I certainly didn't turn on the World Cup to listen to it from a hypocrite. But that's and the also, thing, if you're going to get your facts, be across your facts. We do need to deal with issues in this country. But you are one of the leading voices going over there, telling them what they should be doing in the first place. So how are you now suggesting that we need to reverse back into what we should be doing over here? Make your bleeding mind up. The thing is, we'd, we'd just come out of a Sunday morning, no doubt, when this was given huge prominence, the situation yeah. in this country politically, the situation with industrial action, the si situation with uh, workers, quite rightly in my view, trying to get themselves a better deal. And I think that's but that right. was a Sunday morning. That's its Sunday yeah. morning yeah. menu. Yeah. And then you think, ah, I wonder who's going to win, Argentina or France. Yeah. Then you hear that. But I mean, Gary, I mean, we've discussed this before. Somebody somewhere, I don't know, I blame Sky for it. Somebody gave him a memo saying, everything you have to say, we're all keen to hear. And it's always right, Gary. Uh, and I don't think that's the case. I think some of it is absolute preposterous nonsense. And I pretty much told him that in Qatar. And, you know, I didn't really want to talk to him because he was busy reciting the, 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 uh, the mantle of Corbyn to various people. But the bottom line is, and we're going to stray into that territory, we're being guilty of it, aren't we, by talking about politics. That was not the time and place. You want to have those opinions... And you want to be the mayor of Manchester and take over from Andy Burnham? Off you go, son. You know, in your little socialist multimillionaire lifestyle that you have, with your wealthy friends like Peter Liam that you get over to come over and run football clubs because you don't actually want to put your hand in your own pocket. And you want to have those views. That's fine, but not on a football show when people are tuning in to watch the World Cup. Well, you know, it's not the place. It's not the time. You're not having the courage to say these things when you're on the broadcaster of the country who bought and paid you to be there in the first place whilst you railed against them in England. And it's also not the time. And I'm disappointed that Richie Sunek felt the necessity to give it any gravitas. Well, I'm was, I think he was asked. Because I'm was telling you now, what did that don't answer it. Say, so who's Gary, Gary Neville? Right? The bottom line is, is that what you do is Gary Neville will be sitting again. These are triggers. I'm triggering the right people. I'm triggering the male. I'm triggering the conservatives because they're awful, evil, devilish people, right? And some people may hold that view and some people may not. But I don't really think that he's worthy of the opportunity of triggering people. Mm. I just think he's a Barrett Room lawyer with a lot to say for himself. And I'd welcome the opportunity to bring him in here so we can take his pants down and put him in his place. Chris uh, is one, one of the many listeners this morning saying, regarding Neville, he may well be a hypocrite, but not the right time or place. We are all calling out for football to raise the issues no, of Qatar. No, we weren't. Well, we did. We did. We raised issues in Qatar but we didn't call for that were troubling people and that were on people's minds. Some of what he says is rubbish, but not all of it, says Chris. And that's fair comment. But there was a time and a place for everything and a World Cup final. We've seen what the BBC did. Put the opening ceremony behind the red button. We've seen what the BBC did. Put the closing ceremony behind the red button. We've listened to Gary Lineker's views on things. I would love these guys to actually recant the facts. There is lots wrong in that country. There's lots of things that need to change by the standards that we live by. But there is also a lot right with it. And people going over there with this and coming back with the same ideas yeah. as they went with it, I find that perplexing. And it's not because I rode around in a limousine only going in VIP. It's because I bothered to avail myself of certain aspects and facts of that country. And yeah, it's absolutely right, migrant workers' rights in 10 years ago were bleeding awful. Lots of people, tragically, died building things in this country at the start of our industrial revolution as well. Yeah. But it was important, and you're right to emphasise it. That's why on TalkSport, and this is no pat in the back here, this was our jobs to do this. That's why some months ago I get in front of uh, Nasser al Qatar, who is the chief executive of the World Cup Committee. That's why when we were out there, we spoke to Hassan Al-Thawadi, uh, of the of the uh, Supreme World Cup Committee. And that's why we're in the company on a regular basis of Nasser al Khalafi, the chairman of Paris Saint-Germain, to get answers to questions, to hear what they had to say. Because there's got to be balance. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.